You're listening to the Chronicles of Living Podcast, where we talk to everyday people about everyday things in the past, present, and future. Now let's talk. visionary dreamers how is everybody on well, let's talk sunday this is adion and today's topic is stop taking people personal stop it y'all just stop i'll be right back we are learning always turning later Switching to gear, let's go As we climb up the hill, don't slow down Pedal a little more The mind is working, it's in control Your wheels are turning a little more Going higher and up the notch Keep it steady, don't watch the clock go If you're just tuning in for the first time This is Adion, your dream pusher, your lifeguard Saving you from yourself, from the world From some real bullshit, y'all And you are listening to Chronicles of Living Podcast Show, the show for everyday people doing everyday things, living everyday life. Us extraordinary folk here, out here in this world, in this universe, on this planet. That's what we are. We are extraordinary visionary dreamers. It's just that some of us choose not to walk in our visions and our dreams. That's That's the difference. That's it. (laughs) But today's topic is stop taking people personal. And so, like I said, for my newcomers, this show is really geared towards, you know, pursuing your dreams, your visions, your goals. But in the midst of that, cleaning yourself up, cleaning up all of that excess baggage that you've just been carrying along with you for years and years, you know, just like Erica Badu's song, Bag Lady, you know what I mean? Um, if you know the true meaning of that, that's basically what she's talking about, you know, you just carry stuff with you throughout life and it affects you in negative ways at various times. And the main reason for the baggage most of the time is the fact that most of us take people personal. Now, in this show, I talk a lot about not taking people personal and knowing that you are in control of your life at all times, no matter how crazy that sounds and, excuse me, how impossible that might seem. But it's true, you are responsible for your own happiness. There is nobody else that's responsible for your happiness but you. Understand that. And so, with that being said, that's why I'm saying stop taking people personal. Because, see, we rely on people to make us happy. To, you know, to we just obligate people to us. And that is not healthy. And when I talk to y'all, as I always say, I'm talking to myself. These are things that I've learned along my journey. Of course, it was a time that I took people personal. And every now and then, I still have to stop myself and ask myself if if a person does something or says something to me that I'm not feeling. I have to, you know, reevaluate and say, you know what, ADI? Stop. you taking this thing personal. Don't take it personal. Okay? Because this is the thing. 
we are all individuals, right? We all have our individual lives and stuff going on and issues and whatever we got going on in our lives. So therefore, a lot of times, the things that we might have going on in our lives, if we are not at a place of um, peace with ourselves, then it could come out in all kinds of ways that you don't even realize. <laughs> and sometimes you can look back at times in your life um, that you might have said something to a person or did something wrong to a person that you, you know, now you are growing or you've grown and you like ask yourself, like, how can I do that to that person? How, why did I say that to that person? Why did I talk to that person in that tone of voice? Well, what happens is that whatever you're feeling within you comes out to whoever you're talking to or whoever you're around. And most of the time, it is our loved ones. Most of the time, it is the person that is the closest to you that gets it, okay? <laughs> they get hammered with it, with whatever your stuff is going on within you. So, you know, that's why we have to learn not to take people personal because one thing I've learned along my journey as well is that hurting people hurt other people. So when people are hurting inside, sometimes it could come out in a way of, you know, hurting others, you know, whether it be abuse, verbal or physical abuse, whether it just be um, just, you know, just the way they treat you, just the tone of voice they talk into you. And, you know, somebody could come home from work and you all happy and chipper and, and they had a horrible day and they don't know how to express that and they just really want to be alone but you want this conversation with this person you all happy you in your good mood and so you don't understand why they so grumpy and you just write it off as though they have a problem with you when it, when in actuality no they just need a moment they just need a moment to detox everything that happened to them throughout the day they just need to get it off their brain and just get a moment but i know as a woman us as women i'm not so much like this but you know um there have been times i might have been like this because we are okay we want the person to you know what I mean to talk to us at that time we want to you know get across whatever conversation we want to talk about regardless of how they feel and if they don't do it it's like oh you you know you don't love me enough or you um you know why you treat me so wrong or whatever but it's really not about that if we take the time to just give each other space you'd be surprised as to how healthy of a relationship you can have with someone. If you just take that time to just, you know, um, listen and listen to the person when they say, you know, give them a moment, um, let them have a moment to themselves and you just give it to them without taking it personal and without, you know, like beating yourself in the head as to you did something wrong. You'd be surprised as to how, uh, much your bind will grow with that person rather be your kid your parent your spouse your friend whoever it may be you know we all go through different things at certain points in our lives and we all digest those things in a different way so we gotta allow each other space and time to digest to release to detox you know those things within us that we're working out ourselves you know like I am a very social person and I'm an extrovert but I'm I'm an introvert as well there are times that I just like being to myself and like being by myself I like being by myself a lot <laughs> for me to be so social I really do I, I really uh I want to say, um, I don't know, honor my me time. Although, yeah, there are times I do want companionship. and But I want companionship that overstands me, that overstands that I don't have to have you in my space every waking moment of the day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Give me my me time. You know, I don't like clingy people. 
rather be friends. I've had friends that I had to cut loose because they were clingy, because they were needy. And I get it, you know, once you find a person that you know overstands you or will listen to you, you you want to call on that person all the time for conversation for your needs or whatever like that. But you got to understand that sometimes that person needs to be replenished as well, you know, and that's just who I am. Like I'm always there for anybody to talk to and to motivate and to encourage i'm here i'm that i'm that girl i'm that woman that that person but i also have to have time to replenish my energy as well and every now and then a person will catch me on that moment that i'm replenishing and they'll take it in a personal way as though i'm being mean or you know, I, they did something wrong, and that's not the case. It's just that that's just how I'm wired. I, I'm this is just who I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I say, you know, another reason why we can't take people personal is because, you know, people grow, and we all grow at different rates and different times in our lives. And we, when we grow, um, God puts different things on our hearts that. Um, you know, different paths to walk that we have to take on and different tasks to do. And sometimes when you're growing and you are so stuck in a comfort zone, so used to the same friends, being, you know, just doing the same thing, same routine, it can bother you. It can confuse you and it can um, come out in different ways as well that are sometimes out of your control towards people, you know, because you are now wanting to figure out what's going on with you. You are, you know, wanting to map out like, okay, what's wrong with me? When it's not nothing wrong with you, it's just that you're growing and God is wanting to take you to a new level in life. And with that new level cause a lot of times might call for a new environment and might call for a whole new community of friends so that you can grow and so that you can be around people that understand your growth when you stay in a comfort zone and you are growing and God has put all of these extra visions and dreams and goals on you to um, do and the people around you don't get it it could come out in different ways from them. It could come out as they're hating on you. They're, you know, treating you different. They, you know, they might call you weird. It's, it's, it's so many different ways that our surrounding environment and people can come off to us when we're growing. And we, it's not that we want to be different. <laughs> we just are different. And it just clicked one day in our head and it's not in our control because God is in control of what's going on with us in our lives at every moment of the day. You know, we are in control with if we choose to grasp hold of what God is doing within us. That is the difference. If you choose to take hold of what he is doing and to you know go on that journey and go on that adventure to see where it leads you then okay it'll be easier for you to shed people and shed old habits and and shed things that you're so used to um doing or buying and, and things of that nature you know and the journey will be a little bit smoother for you and therefore it won't bother you and you won't take people personal when they don't understand you because you get what's going on and you're enjoying the journey of your new growth, of your new uh, level that God is taking you to. So it won't bother you that your surrounding environment and your surrounding people that you grew up with or you're used to, family members, friends, you know, um, maybe even spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, husband, whatever. You know, kids sometimes. It's like, what the hell is going on with you, mom, dad? You know, what you going through? And this is what happens. It's just like, perfect example, perfect example. Your kids, okay? 
you can't take your kids personal as they grow into this teenage state because once they start growing into that teenage state, we but we all know that when you start hitting puberty, things just start going on within you, within your body, within your mind, and you don't know what's going on because you're this kid growing into this teenager and now all of a sudden you get this pubic hair and you it's just you know different hormones is going off alarms is going off you don't know how to take it you're feeling sensation in your body and you don't know what to do with it especially if you don't have a parent that um sits you down and explains how your body uh just starts to transform into adulthood slowly but surely and what to expect you're just confused. And so now as a teen, grow, I mean a, a tween growing into a teen, you're going to school and some of the friends are growing at a faster rate and they're into uh, having sex and all of this stuff, but you're not ready. You know, as this tween growing into a teen, you're not ready for that. So now they want to tease you because they like, oh, you lame and you're not cool because you don't want to have sex and all of this stuff. You know, I'm saying that because that was me. <laughs> they, it, it was a boy in my in my class that used to call me Virgin April. I was so mad. I used to want to fight him all the time. <laughs> but I just wasn't. I just was into what I was into. I was into my sports and I was into, I didn't stop playing with dolls until I was 14. Okay. And I would take my doll around to, um, a good friend house. I remember her name was Lorraine <laughs> and she wasn't ready to stop playing with dolls. Neither. We were the same age. And I don't know what we did. We just used to play with the dolls. <laughs> you know what I mean, I had lifestyle, doll, life size dolls and Barbie dolls and, I was just still into dolls where other people was into doing the freaky D. And um, I just wanted to do my sports and play with my dolls and stuff like that until, you know, I met my, my, my first boyfriend, you know what I mean? And, you know, it just, I just wasn't ready. And they would laugh at me. The guys around the way, they would laugh like, you still playing with dolls? And people would laugh at me, but I didn't care. I did not care because I wasn't ready to go to that level and I was comfortable with me. I was I was very confident in myself and what I was doing and where I was at that time in my life. So, you know, after a while, yeah, the peer pressure started hitting me and, you know what I mean, uh, the whole surrounding of school and what's going on in school and Little by little, I did fall into that slightly, slightly, but not all the way. I still stayed within my comfort zone as, as far as doing the things that I love to do and my dancing and my my sports and stuff like that. And at that time, you know, writing rhymes and, you know, writing and rapping and all that stuff. I still did that and pursued that. And I was different. I was different. And people did judge me, whether it was in school, whether it was at home, you know. But you have to take a stand for who you are in life, who God created you to be. You have to get to a point that where everybody else around you thinks about you, it doesn't matter. That your journey and your walk in this time, space, reality is more important than anything. Because like I always tell you, we all have a purpose. We all have something to add to this to this world. It might just be, not just, it might be you are put here to be the greatest mother of all. To mother your kids, to mother their friends that come into your home that don't have a mother that's really a mother. You get what I'm saying? That is an important role. Your role may be to be a speaker and go out there to the world and, and sp spread inspiration and motivation. Your, your journey might be to be the best mechanic there is to make sure everybody's car is running right. But you, you as an individual have to learn to embrace you and to be cool with you. So that everybody else's thoughts of you don't matter. 
It don't matter. As long as you are walking in a good light and you are, you know, um, spreading love and you're loving yourself, you're valuing yourself, you know your self-worth, you're walking in your self-worth, that's all that matters. As long as you are doing the best you can with the life that you have, with the cards that you've been dealt, and in the midst of that, you are kind to people, that's really all that matters, you know? It's not our job to make other people happy. We are put here to enjoy each other. And that was something that God spoke clearly to me um, maybe a week ago. Because I'm right now, I'm, I'm in the midst of a, a cleanse, 21-day um, Fast, but not a fast as, you know, fast, you could do different types of fast, okay? My fast right now is just for clarity um, of my journey, of my purpose, and um, the things that I am put here to do and to add to this world. That is what my fast is for right now. And yes, I did cut out meats, and I'm more so doing liquids on this, but when I eat, I'm eating like vegetables basically you know or fruit and that's just that but since I, th I started on the third of this month and since this journey um I mean it's just been so many things that's been um coming to me and God has just really been clarifying a lot of things to me so that's why I'm able to this is why I'm speaking to y'all on this topic now you know we are put here to enjoy each other and that's it in whatever way we can we are not put here to obligate each other you know and obligation that is like you're bounding someone to you but you can see when you say to someone i'm obligated to you most of the time you're saying that because it's a form of gratitude and it was something that this person did for you or or just made you feel good about yourself or wh whatever that you feel like you want to re re return that um, favor or that feeling or, you know, that thing. That's a good obligation when you obligate yourself to somebody, but not an obligation from yourself to somebody because they are making you feel obligated because they're telling you, you owe me this or you owe me that because I did X, Y, and Z for you. That is not a healthy obligation. We should all be doing things from our heart because we love the person and not really expecting anything in return, you know. Now, hey, I'm not perfect, you know what I mean? And I'm not guiltless of a time that I might have felt like, oh, I've done this and that and the other for this person. And when I did it, I really did it out of love. I really did it from my heart. But then when I turned around and I might have needed that same person, they weren't there for me. Did I take it personal? Hell yeah, I took it personal. You know what I mean? Because at that time, I didn't understand the concept of not taking people personal and that we are all um, responsible for our own happiness. I didn't understand. I didn't understand that concept then. But since I've grown and I've allowed this growth to happen and I've embraced the growth, this is why I now under understand that. And this is why I'm saying to y'all, it's so important for you to embrace the growth because you never know what that growth will do for you, how it will clear your mindset and how it will allow you and it will open up doors that has been closed to your knowledge, your wisdom and your discernment for so many years because you weren't ready to embrace your growth. You weren't ready to leave your comfort zone of people that you were so used to um, praising you or know you or whatever, you know? You have to leave sometimes. And when I say leave, I'm not always talking about move. I'm not always talking about, you know, physically moving. But sometimes it calls for that. You know, I know my journey of moving all over the doggone world. 
from 51 times in my life moving that to be honest while everybody else was judging me and everybody else was like oh my gosh you're moving again and they were still in the same place for me that was the perfect journey for me because through those moves I've grown I've grown through people that I've met they've grown through me and me um and I was able to be in different industries and see so many different sides of life, so many different sides of people, so many different cultures that I now can relate to. If an alien came here right now, I bet you I could have a full conversation with them and it would be a great conversation. That's how much I have evolved from all the moves that I've made in my life and from me embracing my journey no matter where it took me no matter how uncomfortable it seemed at the moment you know i've always found and searched for the good in a situation that seems so horrible and this is what we have to learn to do we have to learn to search for the good in it you know sometimes people can come off to you in a certain way and that can be God's way of making you uncomfortable so that you can move on from a person or from an environment so that you will come into where God really wants you to be so that you can go to the next level. Sometimes God will make stuff uncomfortable for us on purpose. Now, I'm not sitting here saying, don't be emailing me saying oh adion you told me a person making me uncomfortable is my husband is my wife and i decided to divorce him no that's not what i'm saying okay i'm saying you have to learn how to search within you the best way for me is meditation you know when i am looking for answers i'm looking for clarity and i need and i got a lot of stuff going on in my head or things are not moving the way I want them to move, I will sit quietly with myself, light my candles, light my incense, and just do my breathing exercise and meditate. And my intentions is always asking, show me, show me God, what is it that I need to learn from this situation? Or what is it that I need to do? Or what is the path that I need to take you know, what doors do I need to walk through? What doors do I need to close? These are the questions that I ask. And meditation is not a religion. It's just a state of being. It's just, you know, you getting quiet with yourself. And here in the beginning, there is a lot of noise. You got all these thoughts going through your head and it's hard for you to sit there and be quiet. But once you start focusing on your breathing, you'd be surprised how calm you get and how relaxed you are. And once you finish meditating, it might not hit you right then and there, or sometimes it might hit you in the midst of your meditation. Like this topic hit me in the midst of my meditation just a few minutes ago, just probably five minutes into my meditation. I didn't even know what I was going to talk about today. And it just hit me, bam. It just came right through. I heard that voice. Stop taking people personal. Bam. Just like that. Okay, that's the topic. All right, let me finish meditating and see what else I get up out of this, you know? And if that doesn't work for you, meditation, then you want to do affirmations. If a person, if you feel like a person hurt you really bad um, and, um, you know, they really hurt your heart or just made you feel some type of way, you know, you need to go in that mirror, go in the bathroom, get a handheld mirror and, and talk to yourself and tell yourself all the things that you need to um, confirm with yourself. You know, I am beautiful. I am strong. I can do this. I, You know, I'm a nice person. I'm kind. I'm, you know, all the things I'm enough. I am. I'm great. I'm intelligent. I'm smart. If somebody's calling you a dummy and stupid, you get in that mirror and say, no, I'm smart. I'm intelligent. I'm brilliant. I'm a genius. Somebody's calling you ugly and all of this stuff. You get in that mirror and you say, I'm beautiful. I'm gorgeous. These are the things that we can do for ourselves to make us good. You will be surprised. You might be listening and say, Adrian, please, that stuff don't work. No, I guarantee you this because I know from experience. 
I know. I've had bad days. I've had people that made me feel some type of way. And all I wanted to do was just love on them or be kind to them and stuff like that. Or I've had people that I've went totally out my way for from my heart. And I didn't really respect, I didn't expect nothing in return, but they weren't there for me. I've had this journey. And I have released all of those people, not released them in a way of, oh, I just don't mess with everybody, but I released them as to the obligation that I was subconsciously putting on them and they didn't even realize it. You know, I've released that from me and it gives you a sense of freedom when you do that, because now when those same people come in your space, you are really, truly enjoying them and enjoying the time with them. Because, see, we have to realize every day somebody leaves this planet, leaves this earth, leaves this life. And you never know who it's going to be. So why hold people accountable for certain things and hold anger towards a person and hurt? hold unforgiveness towards a person when you don't know when that day will come. And if that day comes and you never had a chance to make up with them or to, you know, forgive them or things of that nature, how are you going to feel? If it's your mother, if it's your father, if it's your kid, if it's your, you know, whatever, somebody that you really truly love, how are you going to feel if that person um, just all of a sudden is not here tomorrow and you was holding unforgiveness because of something that they said, something that they did when whatever they said or did, they said it, they said it or they did it because of whatever they were going through personally in their life. It could have been a form of, um, low self-esteem and therefore they, they are fronting on you in front of other people. And um, it just could have been a, a form of low confidence with themselves. And so now when they get around other people and they with you, they're they're working at trying to outshine you. And I was, I'm using the word trying in this in this statement. They're trying to outshine you because they want the attention because they need that at that time. They feel like they need it, but they really don't. But that's what the uh low self-esteem and a low confidence of self makes you do that's that's what the ego does and it, it wants all the attention when you're not comfortable with yourself and you got somebody else around you that is it happens like that you know i used to i just have a friend like that <laughs> that was not as comfortable with themselves and you know only brought me around when they wanted to, I don't know, they wanted to, to bring attention to themselves or they um, didn't bring me around when they wanted all the attention because they felt like I would take it all. And I don't, that's not my forte. I don't, but it's just something about people. When people are confident with themselves and when people um, pretty much know who they are, other people in the room feel that and they're drawn to that. It's not that that person is saying, come, come here, look at me, look at me. No, when you walk in the room and you're a confident person, if you ever notice you've been somewhere and someone walks in the room and they're confident, you just want to know that person. You're like, wow, what is it about that person? Something, something about that person. They just seem like a nice person or whatever. You don't even know why, but you're just drawn to that person. You know, and then someone else walks in the room that could be their friend, but you don't even see their friend at all. Why? Because most of the time their friend don't see themselves. <laughs> How about that? You know, so I'm talking to y'all from different angles of why you shouldn't take people personal. I'm talking to you from an angle of yourself. You know what I'm saying? And from your surroundings. And I have to talk to you in those different aspects because my listeners, you are all from all over this world, all over this planet. And so I work hard at 
touching every angle I can think of so you can get where I'm coming from and tie it into your own experience so that you can work on you. Because that's what Chronicles of Living is all about. It's about us working on ourselves so that we can become the best version of ourselves. So I'm getting close to my time. So let me look and see if I got anything on here. Because uh, I didn't get a chance to really write notes. notes. But I'm going to say this to you. When you stay in your comfort zone and you don't embrace your growth and you don't embrace the fact that God wants to lead you to new places and new heights and new people, you're cheating yourself, you're stunting your own growth, and you are um, basically allowing yourself to steal um, or to lose, let's say that, to lose out on great blessings and great prosperity that God has waiting for you. When you start to feel uncomfortable around people, you start to feel like you're different or start to feel like you're past the way they're thinking and that was your old think way of thinking, it is time to move on. It is time to be around people that you can now relate to at your new level. Because when you are around people that relates to where you are in your new level, you will be amazed at where you can go and how many doors of opportunity can open up for you. That's what I had to learn, you know, that sometimes you you can it's it's not that you don't love the people that you grew up with or family members or whatever. That's no, that's not the case. It's just that we all run a different race. And once we embrace that and we realize that it's okay. You know, everybody's not for your full journey. Some people are for a certain uh stint of your journey and some people are for the long haul. Some people um go away and you're growing in the process of, of them being away from you. And then God can bring them, bam, back into your life when you pretty much ready to to embrace the mentality or the, the journey. You know what I mean? And this is what life is all about. And once you realize that, you will stop being sad. You will stop being angry. You will stop being um, feeling neglected. Because, you know, we have people out here that, that are still feeling some type of way about parents not being there for them or, you know, um, kids not uh, embracing them. But I'm here to tell you that we all have a certain walk in life now. I'm not saying, you know, your kids, if they're being disrespectful, man, come on now. I'm talking about when kids get older and they just on their journey or whatever like that. Um or if your parent just, you feel like your parent wasn't the best parent to you, maybe that's the parent they knew how to be. How about that? Maybe that's the best, maybe they were doing the best they knew how to do. Maybe their parent wasn't a great parent. You know what I mean? So sometimes you can only learn but so much if you don't have a great parent. Or if you don't have a a. a a friend's parent that can show you something. Sometimes people become better parents than their parent was because their girlfriend or their, their, their boy mom was a great mom and they was around that and they was able to see a different example of a mom. So don't beat people up. A lot of times people are truly doing the best they can with, with the knowledge and, you know, the wisdom that they have. A lot of times, you know, some people, they just come from a bad place because, again, they're not happy with themselves. They're not happy with the way their life turned out. They're not, you know, they don't um, understand the fact that you had these dreams and these visions and you're making moves and they had some, but they never did, you know. So now they're angry within themselves, at themselves, but it's coming out on you. And and you don't get it. You like, why why are you treating me this way? Why are you talking to me this way? I'm just doing something good. I'm following, you know, what's on my heart to do. You just don't get it. But that's really what it's about. We hold so many things internally and it comes out 
because we hold it in, it can come out in all kinds of crazy ways that we just like can look back on and say, why did I do that? Why did I say that? And we don't want that. So from a personal aspect, I'm going to leave y'all with this. Search your heart. Search your mind. Search you. And ask yourself, am I taking people personal? Or am I coming off the people to make them take me personal? And then ask yourself, why? Why am I doing this? And ask God. Just sit for a minute. Just ask God to show you. What is it within you that's making you act this way or feel this way? And in the terms of feel this way about a person and how they treated you or whatever, what's making you feel and take on a personal um, feeling about this? Or what's making you act this way towards a person when a person, all they want to do is just be nice to you, love you, whatever, and they, they didn't do nothing to you. We have to sit with ourselves and evaluate and um, evaluate ourselves. That's, that's what we have to do in order for the vision to become clear. And when I'm saying vision is time, the vision as to what's, what's going on with us and the path and the journey that we need to start walking on. We have to do that in order for us to grow into the best version of ourselves. That's what it's all about, guys. That's what life is all about. So I'm going to leave y'all with this. Life is about us enjoying each other. We don't always have to overstand each other. But we really are put here to enjoy each other and to learn from each other. That is the main reason that we are put together as a community, as a community of people. To love one another, be kind to one another, to conversate with one another, you know, and to to learn. More importantly, to learn from one another. Laugh together, you know, so enjoy. Enjoy your family, your friends, your spouse, your kids. Enjoy them for their strengths. We all have strengths. Enjoy them for their strengths. Focus on the strengths. And then you'd be surprised as to how the weaknesses won't bother you as much and how you could just pray that God help them with their weakness but help you to um, be okay with their weakness while God is working on their weakness how about that so that's that's where I'm at in life I just want to enjoy people that come across my path um, I'm, I'm hearing whatever clarity I have when it's time to you know move on from people or when it's time to you know I'm not I'm not trying to move no more, but <laughs> physically from my from where I live. But um, but when it's time to meet new people and go out and network, I'm so open to it right now because you know, hey, when you know the same people, most of the time every everybody's just doing the same thing. You know what I mean? So how can you grow? So I'm telling y'all right now, if y'all do nothing else. Work on connecting with people that overstand you. Connect with new environments. Network. Go out there. Leave your comfort zone, okay? Sometimes that might mean physically. Sometimes that might mean mentally. Sometimes that might mean just detaching yourself from certain folk. You reevaluate yourself and see which one it means for you and do it. And you will be amazed as to the doors that God will open up for you, the opportunity, the new relationships, um, the great environment, and how it's going to make you feel. You're going to be surprised. So let it go, y'all. Let the fear go. Let the comfort zone go. And stop. Stop taking people personal. You are in charge of your own happiness. You are in charge of your own life. No matter what direction it goes, you are in charge of it. And sometimes it's just God helping you to get to a place of building your character to where it needs to be. So that when he brings you and gives you 
and blesses you with the abundance that you've been praying for. Your character is ready. Your personality, your, your, your mindset, your spirit, your soul is ready to receive it. And that is what it's all about. So, oh, <laughs> before I go, I did not put the YouTube video up. If you listened to the show last week, it's going to be on Wednesdays. I decided I'm doing all YouTube videos on Wednesdays, whether it be just me giving you information or interviews. So all YouTube videos will be on Wednesday. Now, I did tape them, though, on Thursday. I taped them all. I got to edit them. But the YouTube videos will be Wednesdays. I guess I don't know what time. It'll be up by 7 o'clock. Let's say that. 7 o'clock every Wednesday. I'm going to have a new YouTube video. So go to Chronicles of Living YouTube um, channel on Wednesdays and check them out. Make sure you subscribe, you like, you share. Help me build them subscriptions up because it's, it's basically new. So I need to get these subscriptions up. And when I get up to a thousand subscribers, I'll start going live on YouTube. Just like I'm doing live here. Okay, but I got to get up to a thousand. That's my that's my mark. That's what I'm doing. And then I'll go live on YouTube. Other than that, they'll be pre-recorded. Okay, and um, definitely I love you guys. Thank you for all of your support. Always, you know, share, comment. You always come come back and comment. Listen to the podcast on all your favorite platforms: iHeart, uh, iTunes, Stitcher. Download the app in the Google Play Store. All that good stuff. I always forget to say this stuff. But send me your emails, Adion, your dream pusher dot com. Um, you want to be on the show? You a listener? You've been listening? You feel like the show has helped you? Hey, come on the show. Tell the other visionary dreamers. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation. I'm open, okay? And um, other than that, you know, enjoy yourselves. And what I'll be on before Christmas, will I? I think I will. Yeah, I'll be on before Christmas. Okay, so enjoy your family, your friends, your kids. Stop taking people personal. Enjoy them, their strengths, and enjoy the time with them. That's what I'm leaving y'all with. Okay, this is ADI, your dream pusher, your lifeguard, saving you from yourself, from the world, from some real bullshit. And make sure y'all go out and buy the books, Visionary Dreamer 90 Day Journal, and transform your life. Uh, discover your purpose. Search Amazon.com and search for April Adion Williams or look at the link below in this description. Okay? See y'all. I mean, talk to y'all next Sunday and watch YouTube on Wednesday. I love, love, love you guys. Peace. Thank you for listening to Chronicles of Living, where we talk to everyday people about everyday things in the past, present, and future. And if you are pursuing your dreams, I'm proud of you. Because the best part of life is when you decide to live. To keep up with us, please visit chroniclesofliving.com Until next time, this is Adion, your dream pusher. I love you guys.